All right, so we got GameSpot's review for Star Wars Outlaws. Let's see what they say, and then I'm going to give, like, my actual predictions and like that. Uh, let's go. Let's go. On a key. Nick's dug into a fruit. Let's, go, let's see what GameSpot says about it. Into it. I don't know what they're going to say. It's open with dozens of flies that have been growing inside. Ew. What's unnerving to me happens to be a delicacy for Star Wars, as Kay lets Nix happily lap up the fluttering bugs while she leans in to begin nibbling the fruit. It's a very different scene from the food stand on Tashara, where I watched Kay and Nix gobble down roasted street corn. Both moments, however, are full of love. And what? looking back on them and the other food vendors in Star Wars Outlaws, I appreciate how they briefly delve Let's... into an aspect of Star Wars you've really never seen before. Pre-review, I don't really pause like that, but pre-review, I think GameSpot's, I think they're going to give it like a, they might give it a, See, they're not as okay. See, IGN, and I'm sorry if I'm pausing or whatever. I, I usually don't pause it, I let the video just play out and talk. But IGN, see, IGN, bro, they're, they're so bro, they want nothing but heaven. They want heaven. If, if, if this game did not come from heaven, it's not a 10 out of 10. GameSpot, they're a little lenient. I'm gonna say that GameSpot might give it a seven. Oh, the street food scene. This is outlaw strength. The moments that give you a glimpse into what it's like to live in the Star Wars universe for those who aren't fighting a galactic civil war or training to become there are a, a lot of glitches in this game i'll but admit they that are so they are. few and far between for as much as outlaws is a decent action game it regularly delivers unsatisfying narrative payoffs and misses the mark when it comes to rewarding gameplay choices uh -oh. Okay, all right. I said a seven. Oh, they might, bro. They might go lower. It's either a seven or a five. That's what I'm saying. One of those. In Outlaws, you play as K Vess, an up and coming mercenary who finds herself becoming an outlaw after a job goes poorly and a high stakes bounty called a death mark is placed on her. To escape the bounty, K finds herself thrust into the position of putting together a crew to break into the near impenetrable vault of the man who wants her dead. Her attempts to put together the perfect team take her across the outer rim of the galaxy, always accompanied by the latest in Star Wars a long procession of weird little guys, the adorably axolotl-like Nyx. In her adventures, Nyx is adorable. Kay regularly comes into contact or conflict with four <laughs> criminal organizations, the Pike Syndicate, Crimson Dawn, the Hutt Cartel and the Ashiga Clan, as well as the Rebel Alliance and Galactic Empire. Even ignoring the obvious shortcoming, Kay is yet another human protagonist in a sea of Star Wars games, movies, and TV shows that also feature a human protagonist. Kay is just not that interesting. A common narrative through line for Outlaws is that Kay is aimless and doesn't know what she wants for her future, not even having any plans for how to spend the millions she'll have once her crew has stolen from the man who wants her dead. The other characters like to remind Kay about this a lot, which in turn... I agree. I agree. You know why? Because if you look at other Star Wars games, like if you look at, say for example, um, okay, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. You got, uh, Cal, you got Cal Kestis. He has an entire story. You get what I'm saying? He has like a... He has an entire story. He knew people. Uh, um, I'm pretty sure his story was that uh, he was the only one. Oh, what was the story, bro? Hold up. I had to go back and see. But I remember he was like the only Jedi. He was the only person that, that wanted to be a Jedi. He, he was the only person that wanted to be like a Jedi or something like that. Um, some of his closest friends died. Um, or oh, sorry. Some of, some of his closest friends got killed. Um, let's see. Constant betrayal. Like, there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of, like, story and drama around Kyle Kessler. You get what I'm saying? With this character, she seems like she just, she just, I mean, she just wants, like, a better life at that point. She just wants to get the millions or whatever. Which, I mean, I don't really fight that. But I understand what they mean by this, so. Acts. As I understand. To the player that you're embodying someone with no apparent aspiration. She doesn't have a goals. story. That's what, that's what he's saying. That's a character who's hard to relate to and yeah. even harder yeah. to write for, as yeah. is evident by the lack of any clear arc to Kay's story. I understand that. There are that. moments where the game seems to posit that the story has changed Kay, 
but there's no build-up to any of them, and so they ultimately feel narratively confusing or sudden and unfulfilling. When the credits yeah. rolled, I wasn't convinced that K had actually undergone any sort of personal growth. The K at the end of the game largely talks and acts like the one at the beginning, save for an appreciation of her new teammates, and I'm still unclear as to why she likes them. And if the main character hasn't grown at all, then what were the past 30 hours of story for? Yeah. The best part about Outlaw's story, and the game in general, is the sound design. Everyone who had a part in the creation of the musical score or the design of the sound effects used for the blasters, speeders, ships, or environmental murmurs deserves all the accolades. Bro, he said all... Oh, no, no. Hey, hey he's violating right now. Hey, 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 he's violating right now. He, bro, bro, listen, I don't want to start drama. I'm not one, I'm not the guy to, you know, to mix up everything. But he said, bro, the people who worked on the music, they deserve the recognition. Not the people who worked on the story, not the people who designed the character. Okay, I know I'm staring. I listen, I'm staring up. I, listen, I'm joking, but that's what he, that's what he said, though. Like, <laughs> That's what he said. Like, come on, bro. Listen, he's petty. He said they deserve all. He didn't have to say all. He could have said, oh, this is, they deserve some uh, accolades, whatever. He said all. Open your ears. That's what he said. Get ready, Nix. Outlaws sounds quintessentially Star Wars, it does beating sound, out the it gold does sound standard good. of Respawn's Jedi games. The orchestral surge as K takes off into space and activates her ship's hyperdrive for the first time is sublime perfectly jumping off a ramp in a speeder to circumnavigate an imperial roadblock rewarded me with an intense burst of speed that i swear i could feel in my bones for as many issues as i have with the game there are twice as many moments where the music and sound effects briefly transported me into the world of star wars and i That's haven't been that immersed in the franchise in decades the music and sound design is super. It's a movie game. This is this is a movie game. For me, this is a movie game. The cutscenes, bro, and this is why I can't wait to react to the cutscenes. The cutscenes and this, for me, it's it's almost like a movie in a way. That's the thing. It's almost like I'm watching a movie. So like I can't wait to actually like react to like the cutscenes in this one. I can't lie to you. <laughs> Like, like this game, it gives off like a, a, it's like I'm watching a Star Wars positions movie. positions itself as a lot of things and doesn't follow through on most of them. The story implies this will be a heist. Grab the crew, make a plan, do the job. But there's very little of that. The gameplay points to Outlaws being a stealth game, as Kay has no force powers yep. or fancy body armor yep. and relies on Nyx to distract guards or security cameras. But she is so skilled with a blaster that unless you put the game on harder difficulties, she can quite handily mow through legions of stormtroopers or criminal armies and forego stealth entirely. The inclusion of a ship seems to indicate that space battles will be a pillar of the experience. Which is a good thing. The ship handles poorly, and space battles are an unexciting slog. Barring oh a couple God. of mandatory moments, the game allows you to avoid space altogether, and that's for the better. And a relationship tracker that provides updates on Kay's fluctuating status for criminal syndicates indicates that who you have alliances with and animosity against impacts how k is perceived but barring one unrewarding moment right at the end of the story it doesn't combat at least is more exciting and when combat breaks out k is a capable gunslinger armed with a blaster that can deftly switch between four distinct shots on the fly K can okay, react that was wild to pretty right much there. any situation that was in front wild. of her. Nyx can be commanded to fetch fallen firearms in the midst of a fight, letting K temporarily wield more powerful rifles, snipers, and grenade launchers too. And when K has done enough cool stuff in a row, she can build up enough adrenaline to unleash a special move during which yep. time briefly slows and she can mark off several targets to take out in a split second. That is cool. K handles cool. just fine. No less agile than the front runners in other action adventure games like Tomb Raider's Lara Croft or Horizon Zero Dawn's Aloy. But K can handle most threats by staying in place and keeping behind cover. Unless you put outlaws on a harder difficulty, firefights are only a passing challenge. They take more brain power than stealth encounters because you have to react more quickly. But the enemy AI isn't very smart. Often I could just wait behind cover and let the enemies blindly charge me, 
making them easy targets. These fights are cheap, easy thrills. There's nothing groundbreaking about Outlaw's combat mechanics, but they aren't bad by any means either. He, he's giving the main it a crux five. of Outlaw's gameplay, however, are stealth encounters. K regularly has to sneak inside somewhere to find someone or something, or escape an enemy base without being seen. The gameplay is fine. K can direct Nyx to distract guards or cameras, or use takedowns or the stun setting on her blaster to silently knock out enemies. There's even grass for her to hide in and whistle from to attract the hapless guards akin to Assassin's Creed and air ducts to crawl through. It all works as intended, but there's not much that feels rewarding in it. The enemy AI is egregiously dumb. Lots of enemies in these missions stand still <laughs> facing the computer, making them easy to sneak up on or patrol in mapped patterns, making them easy to predict. Hey, what <laughs> <laughs> Outlaws does not have a traditional oh skill tree where K unlocks new abilities by earning points. <laughs> Egregiously Instead, dumb is K can crazy. Hear rumors about experts hidden in the world and then, <laughs> using those clues, track these people down to wherever they're hiding on one of the various planets. After befriending these experts, they'll clue K into challenges she can complete for them, and upon doing so, K unlocks additional abilities and upgrades that add more options to her tool belt. These challenges add a degree of optional complexity to Outlaw's gameplay, introducing small goals that you can keep in the back of your mind while in the midst of a firefight or slinking through a restricted area. Save for the handful the story forces you to unlock, none of these additional abilities are mandatory for beating the game, but completing the challenges to unlock them introduces entertaining tests of skill. These tasks aren't narratively rewarding, but their inclusion does improve the gameplay by encouraging you to mix things up a little throughout the third. He's giving us a five, bro. Going off the beaten path to complete these challenges. I love this, by the way. You see more of Outlaw's I love handful this. of worlds. Whatever she's Save on this thing, Kijini, I love that, bro. Which is mostly just one hub. Each of the planets is a collection of hub spaces connected by yeah. an open world. Yeah. To get around these open worlds, K has two main means of transportation: a speeder and her ship, the Trailblazer. I'm a much bigger fan of the former. Though initially unwieldy and difficult to control, K's speeder can be upgraded with all manner of parts that make it more nimble and increase its maneuverability, helping K speed through Outlaw's handful of open worlds at entertainingly breakneck speeds. It's designed to make the trek between point A and point B faster and more thrilling, and in both goals, I, I like that though. I'm colder on the Trailblazer. Aesthetically, it's a remarkable ship, one of my new favorites for the Star Wars universe, and using it to take off from and land on planets is exciting given the accompanying orchestral swell. But in the vacuum of space, the Trailblazer doesn't handle all that well, even after you upgrade it. Dogfights are either frustrating encounters against more nimble starfighters or boring slogs against equally slow cargo ships. Thankfully, like I said before, you can skip most of space. Save for two or three mandatory space battles and missions in the main story, you never have to spend any time among the stars. What is he gonna give this, bro? What is he gonna? All right, there hold are up. So many little moments now. All right, pre predict, bro. Yeah, he's giving, bro. He's giving it a five, bro. If he gives it anything, the, the, listen. He was like half. I wouldn't say half and half. He was more like forty-five to fifty-five whenever it came down to just like good things and bad things. I think he was 45% like good, but like 55, like he, bro, we all know whenever it comes to these like reviews, bro, if they're saying a lot of bad stuff, it's not, bro, it's not even touching an, a, a seven, bro. It's barely touching a seven. It's not touching an eight. Laws that I think a five. I love. However, the unexciting space combat and unrewarding Watch this. This is a five. Watch this. tracker don't add anything meaningful to the Watch experience. This. And neither does K who feels like a protagonist without a meaty narrative arc. The game has some successes when it comes to gunslinging or sneaking, both of which are aided by a superb soundtrack and incredible sound design. But Outlaws does too much of what it does poorly and too little of what it does well. A six? They're giving it a six. Okay. Now, here's what I'm going to say about this. Of what I've seen so far about the game, right? And I'm just going to be completely honest with you. He's right. In a way, he's right. What we've seen, and, but also, like, you, you, you have to understand this, right? 
we've had so many good like Star Wars games, but let me just okay, for example, let me just talk about let's bring up Star Wars Jedi Survivor or or Fallen Order. Let's let's bring up one of those, right? Those are one of, like those are like the two um Star Wars games in like the past few years. Let me just bring up those. And let's compare those to this. Now, those games are better than Star Wars Outlaws by a thousand miles. A thousand miles. Now, he's right. The main character, which her name is Kay, she is very... I mean, here's the thing, though. I was about to say... Because earlier, I agree with him. I, like, he said that uh, her story was... It was very, like, bland. She just wanted to get, like, the money or the millions or whatever. Her story, they, there was nothing. There was no emotion. There was no drama. There was no any Like, there was nothing to keep the toes about the story. It was it was just, hey, I'm trying to get out of here. I'm trying to get this money. Da, 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 da. That was basically, that's basically what it, what it is for her. I'm trying to get this money. Da, 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 da. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to like move, bro. Just, just, just move this weight. Um, that, that was basically what, like, what her story was. She's trying, she's trying to like, get millions of dollars, whatever. Da, 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 da. But then, like, you look at Kyle Kestis when you know at, at the Star Wars Jedi Survivor game and the Fallen Order game, bro. He has a story. You know, there's emotion. You know, he's he had friends that, you know, that got killed or whatever. You know, he has, you know, he he got people to protect. You get him. You get what I'm saying, like. Like there's 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 emotion behind that, you know. There there's, there's there's like that's a story. You get what I'm saying? And it's like a, it, like you said, like like the guy said before. What's his guy? What's his name? Like the guy said before. It, it's like a uh, like Jordan said. Like it lacked story. Like this game lacked like emotion and it lacked story. Now, to be fair, every game doesn't have to have a story. Now. The reason I say that is, or, or sorry, not every protagonist has to have a story. Every Bro, some protagonists, they just want to just get the money. Which, yes, which seems just boring. Like, bro, like, you're telling me that I'm playing this game and, you know, this character just wants to get millions of dollars or whatever? I mean, yeah. That, and, but guess what? Some people are like that in real life. Some people just wake up and all they think about is money, 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 money. That's real life. That, that's what some people, you know, think about. Some people are, and you got some people in, in real life that they get up every single day, they go to work, they protect their family, and, you know, they, 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 they have all these deep, deep relationships with people, and then you have the other person that wake up, and they're just trying to get the money, and they're just trying to go from this place, to, they're trying to go from A to B to C to D to E just to get the money. That's just what it is. So not every, not every character has to have this heartbreaking story that started from the bottom, you know, now we're at the top story. Kind of well, kind of like K. K was, you could you could say that's like her story. Like you know, she was kind of like you know living in at, at like different places, or whatever. And now she's trying to like you know get off this one planet to go here and get some money to do this, and then you know to make money and, and to steal this and to steal that, and and all of a sudden, like at the end of the day, again, everybody's story is different. I wouldn't I, I wouldn't really want to say that her story was boring or whatever. It's just her story was completely different from the normal person's story in a way the normal video game you know protagonist story um but i do agree that her story was very like her, her story definitely lacked emotion it lacked a little emotion it, it did lack a little emotion but i mean for her i think she just wanted like a better life i think they wanted her to have like a better life or whatever or they, they wanted her story to they wanted they wanted her to like you know be able to like you know make relationships and stuff like that and you know, use those use those relationships to, to, to like get to the top or whatever. But if I'm being honest with you, he's right. Um, gameplay wise, it's it's okay. Like it's not bad, but at the same time, it's not like top tier or whatever. Um, one thing I will say about Star Wars Jedi Survivor, you know, they bro, they had the actual like uh, like lightsabers and stuff like that. You were fighting with the lightsaber and stuff. So, to be honest with you, I kind of wish. I mean. This is a different type of Star Wars, like, you know, game or whatever. Um, I mean, I kind of wish, you know, she did pick up, like, a lightsaber or two. But for her, she's a good shooter. She's a good shooter. So that's not, like, the whole lightsaber thing. That's not her, you know, that's not her thing. So um, obviously, this is a very different Star Wars type of game. Um, but this game right here, like I said before, is a movie type of game. Very, It's a movie type of game. The gameplay is it, it's cool. It's not 10 out of 10. But brother, those cutscenes hit different. Those cutscenes hit absolutely different. 
the music and the cutscenes hit crazy. Like he said, the sounds. It, it, it was it was more like a like legit if you removed all the gameplay from this game and you put everything together bro this could be a good movie this could be a legit good movie like in the cutscenes bro everything looks pretty good and and then whenever you get to gameplay the gameplay looks a little iffy or whatever like this is like a movie type of game legit this is what this is what it is you know like some games have that some games um have like the some games have the effect to where like Whenever you actually play the game, like gameplay wise, it doesn't look too much appealing. And then whenever you get to the cutscenes, bro, it's just picture perfect. That's what this game is. You know, it, it, not every game could be like, not every game could be like GTA. GTA 5 is perfect all around. The cutscenes are good and the gameplay is good. You know, and, and, and like Red Dead Redemption and, and, and Final Fantasy. I think Final Fantasy, that, that's a good example too. Um,. What else, um, bro? There's so many other different games. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, De Detroit Become Human. Like I'm just coming up with different games at this point because like I'm I'm trying to like give off some examples of like good gameplay and good cutscenes. This game was definitely a movie type of game, uh, in my opinion. Okay, it's okay if you, you listen. It's okay if you disagree. I'm not going to like you know scream at you for disagreeing or whatever. Um, but for them to give this a six, for Jordan to give this a six, I'm actually really surprised because. I mean, like I said, GameSpot is a little lenient. IGN would have given this a four. Like, 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 bro, IGN, bro, they're menaces, bro. Like, bro, if one thing's not perfect, that thing's not a 10 out of 10, bro. It's GG's. I, I, listen, that's just what it is, man. Other than that, man, comment down below. What do you guys think about Star Wars Outlaws? Give me your review on it. Now, if I, if I was to give you guys like a 1 in 10 review or whatever for this game, I think a 6 is a... I think 6... I, yeah, I think six is a perfect score. I think seven is like a little bit too much. Is like a little too high for this game. Just based off the fact that yes, the cutscenes are good, the sounds are good, but like again, like the story was like a little flat. But like yeah, the story was like a little flat. But also like the gameplay was like uh, uh the glitches were, bro, the glitches were crazy. So like. Other than that, man, comment down below. What would you guys think, uh, bro? What would you guys give this between a one to ten? I'm gonna give it a six, just like GameSpot. Um, I don't know what IGN has given it, but listen, if you want me to check out IGN's uh, review on this, we can definitely check out IGN's review on this. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. See you guys later, some out and.